Back in 2017, I published a video focusing on how to start a work order, the simple steps to starting a work order in Fishbowl Inventory. But since then, my opinions have evolved, and I like doing it a different way now, and I think it's better, and I've been doing it this way for years. And in this video, I'm going to show you a better way to starting a work order. So the first step is going to the picking screen. That's right, the picking screen. Now the difference between the picking screen and the manufacturer order screen or the work order screen is the picking screen has quantity available. And I've got this pre-filtered. If I show all, you'll see I have a lot of work orders that don't have all the quantity. If I select on one of these, pull it up over here to the right, you'll see that I've got some items that are missing and I won't be able to, I won't be able to fulfill that work order. Now if I go to the work order screen, I don't have availability. I can't see which ones that I can start. I can just see the ones that are scheduled to start. And then from the manufacturer order screen, from right here, I can't necessarily see the the date of each individual work order. I have to click on it and then scroll over to see the dates down here at the bottom, right? So the easiest place to see both quantity available and scheduled start date is from the picking screen. So what I do is I go to the picking screen, filter for work order, and then filter by availability by clicking advanced search, show completely fulfillable only. In most cases, you can't start a work order unless you've got everything. There are exceptions to that rule. I understand a lot of you may, uh, or some of you watching this video may have some exceptions to that rule in your company. But generally speaking, usually we've got to have everything in stock in order to start the work order. So then from here, let me do one that hasn't started yet. I guess another column we can have is the status so we know which ones to click on and which ones not to. Yeah, so to add this column, I right clicked and I added status. So now we've got the status of the work order. So then I'll select a work order and then go to the top left hand corner, click start, and then we can uh, print the pick ticket and hand the pick ticket to someone to go pick. All right, so we've got a pick ticket, or maybe this just sent a pick ticket over to uh, the mobile device. You know, there's a, there's a setting that if you start a pick ticket, it'll send it to the mobile device. You can pick it electronically. So we get the pick started, and then the next step is go to the work order. Click on this button that says to work order, and then we click start here. And from here, we start the work order. Click next and print the work order traveler. So we've got an electronic pick ticket or a paper pick ticket. And then we've got a work order traveler. And this document tells us everything that we're supposed to do, all the, all the batch size items. And it also has this column over here to the right, where it allows the user to enter in what they actually used and what they actually produced. We can print out the work order traveler, hand it to the supervisor. The supervisor can log into Fishbowl Go, pull up the work order screen, and scan the work order traveler. And then enter the actual consumption and actual yield here. So going to the picking screen to start the work order, I think is better. I'm Lance, inventory software expert since 2006. Subscribe to this video if you'd like to see more like it. Like if you like this video. And I'd love to hear comments, questions, requests, uh, anything like that, comment below.